This episode is number 251 of the Books, Shows, Tunes, and Mad Acts podcast. This episode is titled, Scary Songs. Welcome to Books, Shows, Tunes, and Mad Acts, the show about stuff we like. I'm your host, Jennifer Crittenden, and sometimes I'm lucky enough to be joined by my co-host, Bill Aho, who has an ear for good music and an eye for the extraordinary. Books, Shows, Tunes, and Mad Acts is brought to you by Discreet Guide, the training company for improving your speaking and writing skills. We hope you enjoy the show. Okay, I'm back with Bill. We're going to do a seasonal show today about scary songs, uh, creepy songs, Halloween songs, uh, thing, songs that go bump in the night. Um, so yeah, Bill, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. All right. So shall we start with the sort of traditional Halloween songs? Well, I mean, to me, I think one of the classic Halloween records isn't really even songs as much as sounds. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I think one of the better selling records for Halloween is like the sounds of Halloween with a lot of the creaky noises and something that you would play on your porch when the trick-or-treaters were coming by. <laughs> uh-huh. and, and I think that is one of the things I think as far as selling albums as opposed to a 45, I think that's kind of started that a little bit more. Yeah, there's so many songs that were kind of pop type songs that were i mean monster mash mm-hmm. classic halloween song or um the haunted house that song which is a little bit more obscure but when you hear it you realize you know it uh-huh how about you yeah i was thinking about um what makes songs scary or creepy and of course yeah those are usually featured in those albums you know the the banging of doors the sounds that are unexplained but kind of unnatural ghostly sounds yeah right yeah Yeah, and there's probably something in our brains that associate those sounds with scary things and that's why it works but then especially musically right there you also get that effect with minor keys or dissonance things that don't go together jarring things that yeah make us feel uncomfortable Um, and those are the ones that that are kind of interesting to me are scary songs that sound scary, not necessarily the traditional uh, Halloween songs that sometimes sort of take on a feeling of familiarity. So they're less scary, uh, Ghostbusters, Monster Mash, um, but ones that as soon as you hear them, you're a little bit creeped out just because of, you know, the way that they're using the instrumentation. And there's a song that I particularly like that I immediately thought of when we were thinking about doing this show. And that's a song called Good Night Moon by a fairly obscure band called Shivery. But as soon as it comes on, do, 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 there's just something about the note progression that's already creepy. And, you know, it's going to be a creepy song. And then Good Night Moon, because it's a children's book. So, yeah, all those things together just make you ah, feel uncomfortable. It's like the the opening to Jaws with the Jaws music, because that mm -hmm. that sounds kind of like the same way, where it's it's just the the notes in such a way that now when you hear those notes in that order, you start to think of something scary. I mean, I think it's just Mm -hmm. we're brainwashed now. Uh huh, and that ominous feeling of something about to happen to you. Actually, yeah, I'll take rest here for a second. I've noticed this effect in several uh, TV series that I've been watching, and that is that the, somehow the makers of the show think that by adding scary music, they can add dramatic tension to the scene. Only the watcher, you know, figures it out pretty quickly that nothing's going to happen in this scene, actually. It's just music, you know, it's just music. So, so yeah, there's a limitation to how effective it is when nothing ever does happen, right? If the hero goes through this creepy house and nothing ever happens except that they play music for you, <laughs> it, sort of, it loses the effect pretty, pretty quickly. 
if you ever have it on subtitles, you'll it'll say ominous music. <laughs> yeah, and it's right. like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Which again, that sort of loses the effect just having it described that way. Another one that I thought of right away was Psycho Killer by the Talking Heads. And that one just sounds scary to me. And the words are scary, Psycho Killer. But also, you know, the fact that they say Psycho Killer, qu'est-ce que c'est? Somehow that you know, using French, that particular French expression also really creeps me out somehow. <laughs> Even though it's just French, there's nothing really, you know, terrible about that. But the, the sound of that phrase in combination, and then, of course, the, the, the talking heads are extremely talented people, yeah. so they know how to make things scary. One of the scary songs that is kind of obscure also is a song by Leon Payne, and it's a song called Psycho. Uh-huh. And it's been covered by Elvis Costello and Jack Cattell. When you hear the song, you don't realize at first what's going on, but he's like singing about these dreams he's having where people end up dying. But at the end, toward the end, you realize, oh, no, he's not sleeping during these songs. He's like sleepwalking or, or just out of a different person type thing. At the end, he's talking to his mother and it's like, mother, why don't you get up? So oh. it's, it's like a really deep, scary song, yet it's enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just the way it's done. And But that's, to me, one of the scarier songs of that kind of thing with Psycho. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, another one I was thinking of, I didn't pick out anything in particular, was just Nick Cave in general, right? It's like almost everything he does is scary. And, you know, that voice that he has, yeah. oh my God, you know, it gets into, yeah, it gets into your bones, that voice. But, you know, it's an interesting thought that some of these songs are actually quite enjoyable. And I like Nick Cave and I like that song, uh, Psycho Killer by Talking Heads. But some of them are maybe for me, I reach my uh, limit pretty fast. Some of them are a little bit too scary. And so they're not pleasant to listen to. So the ones I gravitate to are the ones that are scary, you know, woo, they'll raise the hair on the back of your neck, but they're not so horrifying that you just never want to hear that thing again ever. <laughs> Well, there's scary music, which is the tones and the beats and different things. And there's the scary lyrics. Yeah. And when they go together just right, it really makes quite the impact. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times you're just getting this, like for TV, you're getting that scary music. And a lot of times it's like it's used with songs too, but not always in the best way. Yeah. There's a band um, uh, from Australia called the Black Eyed Susans that they haven't uh, been around for a while. But they have a couple of pretty creepy songs. Their, their songs are often quite dark, and their lead singer has just a marvelous voice, uh, sort of a Las Vegas uh, sh showman, a little bit of maybe even Elvis Presley in there. And they again, I immediately thought of one of their songs, which is called A Cat Needs a Mouse. Yeah, it's just, it's just creepy, right? You don't understand uh, what all the lyrics are specifically are about but this idea of prey and those two things i think their line is they go naturally and yeah just creepy i remember writing to the black eyed season i had a question about i don't know so, something and their lead singer wrote back to me rob snarsky and i said something about i really like your music uh, it's sort of both dark and funny because it, it is, there's often this sort of subtle black humor in their songs. And he just wrote back and said, dark and funny. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think they were, yeah, they were going for that. Well, there's so many artists, I think, that use the pop melodies with the scary words to give you that effect where, oh, you're like singing along. You don't really realize what's going on until you get to a certain point. Um, Steve Poltz is a great songwriter who wrote with Jewel back in the day. You Were Meant For Me was his big hit. But he wrote a song called Hitchhiker Joe. Oh, yeah. Hitchhiker Joe is like, don't pick up Hitchhiker Joe mm -hmm. because he'll split your throat and take your big toe. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, but oh, it's, That's hilarious. Yeah. But, it, but, but it's so catchy that you're singing along and it's like, you don't even think about the lyrics. You're just thinking about, oh, this is really fun. But when you start listening to it or, or hearing it, it's like, oh, yeah, Hitchhiker Joe really is kind of a menace. <laughs> yeah. I, and yeah, trust 
Steve Poltz to come up with something like that, <laughs> right? That's just a quirky kind of thing that he's really, really great at. Yeah, just just a really fun song. <laughs> Yeah, the one for me is uh, Pumped Up Kicks that way. I remember riding on the ski lift in Mammoth and they were playing that. And it's such a catchy song right right away. You're just totally into it. And as I was riding along on the ski lift, we passed the loudspeaker. So the music was louder at that point. And I, I suddenly realized that it was about a person who was preparing for a school shooting and getting their gun ready for that. And it just sent such a visceral, you know, reaction because I at first thought, oh, this is such a fun kind of kid song. And then it's like, oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah, I still have extremely mixed feelings about that song. Yeah, they, should, they shouldn't play that song in a crowd. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I, and I have read a little bit more about it, you know, that people like to play it at school, right, to creep out their schoolmates, which is kind of which is kind of funny. Yeah. But there, yeah, there are songs that that are especially creepy because they don't sound creepy, right? They have that bright, upbeat, you know, super fun, catchy song as and then you get sucked into it. And then start realizing that the lyrics are really dark or are ironic. The one that I often think of for that is The Future So Bright, I Gotta Wear Shades oh. by Timbuk3. It, that's got that edge to it, right? That this isn't actually a happy song. Yeah, there's there's one by the, the jam that a friend of mine kind of pointed out a long time ago. And down at the tube station at midnight, which is a, a really pretty song, but it's like about a guy getting beat up by a bunch of hoodlums. They take his wallet and his keys, and he's worried now that they're going to go to his house where his wife is. Mm -hmm. It's just a really one of those songs where you, when you hear it in that form, it takes on a whole different meaning, a whole different mm -hmm. life. Yeah, another one that I was thinking of for this, you know, overly bright, over the top, yeah, give you chills kind of song is uh, Sunny Vista by Richard and Linda Thompson. Uh, here's some of the lyrics in Sunny Vista. All your dreams are reality. It's the smart place to be for all the family. Oh, Sunny Vista, where you always wanted to stay. We'll dance the happy hours away. It's just like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Stepford town. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. One of the humorous type of Halloween things that I remember comes from back in the day of SCTV and Count Floyd, which was Joe Flaherty doing his scary, like a host of a TV show, he would always make fun of it. But he had a record he put out, like a little four song EP where he does his scary songs, which aren't really that scary, but more, more fun. But it's a whole nother way to look at it sometimes for the scary Halloween type thing. Mm -hmm. If some of these things you can probably find on Spotify or Tidal or whatever you're using, but some of them may be a little bit harder to find. I was also thinking of this idea of having to listen a little bit more carefully to hear what's happening. And I realized there's a whole category of songs that are really storytelling songs that often have a twist in them. They're almost like, you know, flash fiction or really, really short stories. One of the most famous ones I've got to believe is uh, The Lights Went Out in Georgia, where, I mean, it really is a story as you walk through those lyrics. And then it's not until the end that you get the big reveal that, well, they hung my brother before I could say the tracks he saw while on his way to Andy's house and back that night were mine. And yeah, if you're paying attention at that moment, you're just like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's that's I never, never realized that one. I mean, I'm more melody and less words. Mm -hmm. So unless I'm, I get to the point where I hear it many, so many times that it, it clicks, mm -hmm. the words are secondary or you're singing along and then you realize, what am I singing? <laughs> <laughs> Yay, I'm going to kill someone. Excellent. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I know there's all kinds of songs about Son of Sam and all kinds of serial killers, which more numerous than I could even ever come up with, because that's just fodder for lyricists. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are so many of those. It's really amazing how many singer songwriters and lyricists have decided to write a song about a real life 
a serial killer, right? I mean, you know, it's interesting that they that they feel drawn to that. There's one, is it uh, Surfin Stevens? Is that how you say his name? Oh, yeah. Uh, Sufan or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's Sufan. I have a huge collection of his songs. I think my husband likes him quite a bit. And, you know, his stuff is usually pretty upbeat and so forth. But I realized one of those songs, uh, John Wayne Gacy. Gacy. John Wayne Gacy. Gacy, yeah. Oh, John Wayne Gacy Jr. Yeah, that's just a full-on story about a serial killer. <laughs> yeah, there's a song, and I can't remember the name of the artist offhand, but Lee Harvey was a friend of mine. Uh-huh. And it's kind of a upbeat country song about the good time that this girl had with Lee Harvey Oswald. It just puts him in a, a little bit of a different light but then you know the history of him so this kind of like oh you don't know how to take it by the time the song's over nebraska is that way for me i had no idea that that was about a, a killer a killer of young girls yeah and you know that there's not a whole lot in that song melodically that would that would alert you to that fact yeah, so I've listened to that song hundreds of times, probably even sung along with it before I realized there's a hint in the middle of it that it, that it's about a real life uh, killer. So, yeah, you just never know when those serial <laughs> killer songs are going to pop up. Yeah, I know <laughs> who, who they're going to influence next. <laughs> yeah, it, there must be. I mean, they're often stories, right? And drama. So it it, it attracts the lyricist. But yeah, kind of kind of creepy. There are other, Nebraska is, you know, pretty subtle. Uh, another one that's kind of like that, uh, although it's, again, really not clear about what's happening, and I don't think it has anything to do with a serial killer, is Bobby Gentry's song, o Ode to Billy Joe. And that yeah. also has some instrumentation in it, that weird, in it, yeah, that, that kind of clues you in. Something, something very weird happened on that bridge. Yeah, it's not a normal situation. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And of course, very mysterious, right? Those are the ones that yeah, you just listen to and like scrutinize the lyrics. What the heck happened to to uh, Billy Joe? There's another one, you know, to go back to this idea of some of these songs, maybe not being that nice to listen to. So, you know, now that I know about some of them, like, you know, I definitely am very conflicted about pumped up kicks. But there are other, like, you know, Ode to Billy Joe, I don't mind listening to it again. It's an interesting song presented well, and it's mysterious, right? So you think, well, maybe if I listen to it again, this time I'll I'll figure it out. Uh, but there are some songs that I probably never want to hear ever again in my whole life. And uh, one of those is Tori Amos's cover of Eminem's song, she calls it 97 Bonnie and Clyde. I think his version might just be Bonnie and Clyde. And talk about creepy. It's a talking song, mostly, uh, with some uh, music behind it. And she's portraying herself as the father of a girl who has killed the girl's mother and is in fact asking for the girl to help her dispose of her mother's body. And it just goes on and on and on. There's so many verses and it just gets horribler and horribler. So yeah, you know, it's interesting. I mean, I imagine that she put a lot of work into that song, but that, I mean, maybe it's just me, but that is not a song that I want to listen to when I'm yeah. Yeah, just having my day. <laughs> well, her, her first album is kind of a kind of a dark album anyway. I mean, she started with a lot of emotional baggage in her songwriting and performances, and hopefully she's much happier now. But yeah, there was a lot of darkness and, and stuff that came through in her music in the early days. Yeah, not for kids, right? Yeah. <laughs> One of the, there's also songs that are kind of scary in their own right that aren't meant to be, and those are the earworm songs. Like small, <laughs> like 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 small world. I mean, <laughs> right, you start exactly. hearing it, and, and it's scary in a whole different way. It's like it oh, turns no, into I'm, a nightmare. I'm gonna be stuck with this song for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> That's really true. Yeah, that, yeah, it's a whole other aspect of horror songs, yeah. right? Yeah, those earworm songs. That's really true. Oh, that's funny. There's another category of these songs, and I'll bet there are a bunch of them that have to do with someone uh, being punished. Well, it's a little bit like Sweat Out of Georgia, where an innocent person 
uh, takes the blame for something. And the classic one that I always think of is Long Black Veil, uh, which I knew originally uh, as sung by Joan Baez. Uh, the line that gives it all away is, I spoke not a word, though it meant my life, for I'd been in the arms of my best friend's wife. Nice little uh, rhyme there. But yeah, this idea of not being able to speak up and defend yourself and provide your alibi because your alibi is compromising to somebody else. Or in the case of Lights Went Out in Georgia, just things moved too fast. She she didn't have a chance to explain what had happened. And so her brother died. Way to go, girl. Yeah, way to go, sister. I'm trying to look up the name of the song right now, but there's a, another kind of era of stuff where, where people talk about mental institutions uh-huh. and, and songs that are, take place there. And there's one by, I think, Hank Snow or something. I was just trying to look it up, but where it's just like he's just talking about the different people that are coming in around him or the person downstairs who's the son of a rich politician who has had something that's, he kind of, had a breakdown and there's people that think they're people and he's there voluntarily so he can go at any time but it's kind of a scary kind of thing to think about when you hear people singing songs about those kind of things yeah that reminds me of that uh that song that has the line in it i'm not crazy you're crazy suicidal tendencies Uh uh-huh all you wanted was a coca-cola yeah uh uh-huh Yeah, that's a great song, actually. Yeah, that's an interesting song, too, because, I mean, you know, it's distressing and frustrating, uh, but I'll happily listen to that song again. You know, that one's not so so horrible. That I mean, I guess partly because we, we like saying that line when we're driving along. I know, I'm not crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I always go to, but all I really wanted was a Pepsi. Mm-hmm, right? Yeah. There's another one that often gets uh, mentioned as having this message in it. And it took me a long time to realize that that was true. And that's um, Sonny Came Home. Uh, Sean Colvin uh, yeah, performed yeah. that. You know, I've listened to that. I heard at some point, oh, yeah, it's about an abused woman who burns down her house. I was like, what? i would never heard that before. But then, of course, they're exactly right. If you're paying attention and listening, uh, then you realize that that's true. There's a lyric in there, get the kids and bring a sweater. Dry is good and wind is better. Count the years you always knew it. Strike a match. Go on and do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that reminds me of the the famous song Norwegian Norwegian Wood, where oh. where John Lennon is wooing the girl, and and she, all, all she can talk about is, oh, I got this really fine Norwegian furniture. You can't sit in it. Don't sit in my furniture. Um, if you want to stay here, though, you have to sleep in the bathtub. Well, she goes to work, and all he's talking about at the end is how great that Norwegian wood will light on fire. So he's burning it in the fireplace. <laughs> Creepy. I mean, if you re-listen to the words, it comes across, but most oh. people don't don't even see that. No. Isn't it, isn't it nice that Norwegian wood? <laughs> she burned so well. Yeah, these, <laughs> these are the ones that are creepy to me that have this dark streak through them, right? That it takes a little bit of time to uncover somehow. The fact that they've slipped through unawares or, you know, without us being aware of it. And then we discover it that there's something especially exciting to me about that. Another one that I, that is mysterious to me, although it just sounds scary, is Jockey Full of Bourbon by uh, Tom Waits. And it's got the line in it from Treasure Island, 16 men on a dead man's chest. And I've been, yeah, it's just odd. And I've been drinking from a broken cup. Two pairs of pants and a mohair vest. I'm full of bourbon. I can't stand up. And then the chorus, hey, little bird, fly away home. Your house is on fire. Your children are alone. Hey, little bird, fly away home. Your house is on fire. Your children are That's pretty are dark. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty dark. Yeah, exactly. It's not clear what's going on there. But yeah, it, there's there's something up with that. Yeah, your imagination can definitely take you places in that one. Yeah. I think, too, there are songs that are scary by association, right? They might not be necessarily on their own. But I was thinking like Jaws, right? Or there are probably TV shows that have really scary theme songs that as soon as we hear those, you know, maybe Dark Shadows or those kinds of shows. Yeah, I was wondering if there were any that you thought of from when you were a kid, you know, just that theme song would be like, yeah. The only one I can 
just think of, and it's not really scary as the Adams family, of course, because mm-hmm. that's such a maybe the Munsters had kind of a scary beginning with the uh, this kind of aureole sounds around it. I don't know. I think I grew up in a time where there were less of those kind of. If I had been watching TV more about 15 years later, I think I would have been more into when they were putting out more shows that had the scarier type things. Mm-hmm. I, I grew up in the lighthearted time uh-huh. <laughs> of the 60s so and early 70s. And I think darkness came in maybe later 70s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, the theme song for Twin Peaks is pretty yeah. creepy when I hear that now, although I think it's absolutely beautiful and, you know, really genius orchestration as soon as i hear uh, that theme song i of course it's because i associated with the show which definitely had a lot of creepiness yeah that was all creep (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah yeah except for a few brief moments of chocolate and you know pie a a little clarity yeah maybe a log (laughs) here and there (laughs) exactly yeah some nice trees but yeah otherwise pretty darn creepy (laughs) I think what made that creepy was the fact that you you got really no information about the story in one chunk. It was always like maybe a couple of minutes here or there throughout an episode. Mm-hmm. And otherwise it was just weirdness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the imagery was so creepy. Well, actually, yeah, that's true about David Lynch in general, right? A racer head and just really creepy imagery um, that you saw quite a bit of in Twin Peaks too. Just odd things that were happening. It's like, why is this dwarf here dancing? <laughs> ah. <laughs> what the hell is happening here? Yeah. <laughs> were they at a lodge? What's going on there? Well, mm-hmm, right. You'll never know. You'll never find out. But <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah. N- nature never seemed so disturbing as in Twin Peaks. Another category of of scary songs, and this actually really does kind of creep me out, like the serial killers, too, are these really old murder ballads. And one, of course, that might be uh, the most famous is In the Pines. That was a million people have covered, probably made most famous initially by Bill Monroe, but then Nirvana covered it as well. Yeah, this terrible lyric uh, her husband was a hardworking man just about a mile from here. His head was fi- found in a driving wheel, but his body was never found. <laughs> well, there's a lot of old country songs that are so written so creepily. So many songs about where the kid is asking their parents, oh, where, where, where's, what happened to mommy or what happened to daddy or who's going to who's going to take me now? Those go on and on. There's like there's so many of those old country songs that just deal with tragedy Mm -hmm. and that's scary in itself is Mm -hmm. bringing those kind of songs to light yeah it's a different kind of scary not so creepy but really heart-wrenching you know i think you and i might have mentioned that john prine song about there's a hole in daddy's arm where all the money goes you know and it's just it's just heartrending, right? But yeah, a lot of those old songs, you know, were a reflection of the difficulty of people's lives back then, you know, alcoholism and no money, no work. You yeah. Know, just, yeah, really, really dark, right? Because the times were were so dark. There's, um, you know, a lot of those old Appalachian songs also really kind of weird twisted lyrics like have they evolved over time and so they're less clear now or what are they really about or even some of the child ballads uh from that were imported from england you know that appeared in those that we all fall down (laughs) yeah right stuff like that yeah ashes ashes we all fall down right and isn't it weird that some of those things show up in nursery rhymes right Right, even rockabye baby with the poor baby falling out of the tree. <laughs> oh, ha ha! Here's a great yeah. song to sing to your kid before he goes to sleep. <laughs> when you're talking about John Prine, to me, one of his scarier, sadder songs is "Hello" in there. Oh, because, yeah. Because you can reflect on that, and it just brings you to whether it's a relative of yours or thinking about your own future or just someone you just mm-hmm. see walking down the road, and that kind of has its own sense of scariness, sadness to it. I mean, mm-hmm. it could happen to anybody. It has some optimism in it, but it still 
say hello to the person if they walk by because you never know if how far deep in they're in their own hole there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and count on John Prine to, yeah, to reach in and rip our heart out of our <laughs> chest, right? He was so, so skilled at that. Yeah, those old songs, I remember as I started learning more of those old old songs, how violent they were, you know, it's, it's kind of this thing too about fairy tales being so incredibly violent, but those old songs often had this theme of killing a loved one because mostly she, right. Infidelity wouldn't do something or had done something right. And the, you know, the classic one, uh, that I remember from my childhood is on the banks of the Ohio. That one is also especially mm, disturbing because it's told from the point of view of the killer. So it's first person narrative. Um, so he he writes, I held a knife against her breast while into my arms she pressed. She cried, oh, Willie, don't murder me. I'm not prepared for eternity. But she's turned down his marriage proposal. So his solution to that problem is to kill her. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Good, yeah. Right. Yeah. You might have wanted to talk to somebody before before you took that step. Well, those old songs with the alcoholism and stuff, I think it kind of ties into a lot of those stories. Mm. It seems like there was a lot of alcoholism, beatings, and a lot of car accidents that were scary times. Mm -hmm. Phantom 309 or the different songs about ghost and horrors and things mm -hmm. but i think drinking it had a big part of that for that era yeah really hard times right uh, how desperate moves and you know it's interesting too because you get the feeling from those old songs the, the way the lyrics are and the instrumentation is that there really was a lot of lawlessness Right, that it's sort of that Edgar Allan Poe era where, you know, girls did disappear and people didn't know what happened to them. Yeah, it's a window into a different world for sure. That that is quite terrifying. It's interesting that, you know, people are so terrified today, but in comparison, there were there were just a lot of things to be terrified about back then. Yeah. I think with um more and more people and also cameras, social media, all that kind of stuff. It's happening less, but yeah, it's still out there. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And maybe our terrors are about different things. We're not going to be knifed, you know, because we uh, turned down somebody's Facebook request, friend request on Facebook. <laughs> 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 but, you know, yeah, that we're, that we're pursued and persecuted in a different, different way. As I was researching uh, for this episode, I was interested to look at what other people thought was scary because, you know, I think my perception of this is maybe a little bit different from what people think of when they start Googling scary songs. So many of the song lists that I came up when I was Googling it were just sort of like, you know, goth, metal, um, really hardcore, violent songs about, you know, smashing and killing and burning and knifing and rah really kind of blatant, disruptive songs. Yeah, that's not really what I think of as scary songs. Yeah, so it was interesting to read to read that, that that was kind of people's go-to was more those kinds of songs. People, who, or maybe performers who look scary, right? You know, hair and weird makeup and, you know, very um, extreme imagery in their YouTube videos, yeah, it was I was like, huh, that's not really what I think of as being scary. Yeah, it's just a different take, I think, on that. Yeah, and, and with a lot of popular songs, like The Doors, of course, mm -hmm. The End, mm -hmm. I mean, has its own scariness to it, just with the music and Jim Morrison's phrasing of the lyrics. Mm -hmm. And also wrapped up in the in his history, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of alcoholism, right? And someone who's really wrecked by that. One one of the old uh, country songs, I was just looking up some of the, my notes here, is the Leuven Brothers, who are such a great country duo who did all kinds of great songs, but the song called Knoxville Girl. It's a first person account of a ordinary Tennessee fellow who inexplicably takes time to out from a stroll with his sweetheart to be here to death with a stick, despite yeah. her heartbreaking protests. I mean, Mm -hmm. 
why 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 yeah, would what that, the hell yeah why, why would that be a song i don't know it's like somebody has something dark they really have to get out i guess and that's i guess how they do it yeah it's 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 this idea of feeling obliged to write a song about something like that because i think that was a real event right out of nowhere yeah, and, yeah. you know other songs where people have written a song about a real event somebody who seems to just completely lose it and kills all their children, their wife and themselves, right? So there's another story like that. And, you know, I wonder if, if I were in their shoes, I might feel obliged to do a podcast about it. You know, something that triggers such a strong reaction. There's a, another history teacher who's been killed in France, apparently also by another Islamic terrorist. And there was an, a similar murder a few years ago, and I was so provoked by this real life event that I did a podcast about it. And I wonder for songwriters, if it's similar, that they, that that's a way of processing something that seems so inexplicable and worth exploring to try and process it. Or or as a songwriter, maybe you want more people to hear about it and they might hear Mm -hmm. about it through song as opposed to just reading an article in a paper or word of mouth because a lot of times those stories don't get shared as much because they're horrible stories. Yeah, they're horrible. Mm -hmm. And also, I think sometimes people are looking for the shock value. Mm -hmm. You you do a song that will kind of people go, ooh, what's what's that about? And then people say, you have to hear this song. You have to hear this song. And it's another way to promote. But I don't know. I think that's a you, you put yourself into a category that way. And I don't think people can stay in it very long and not (laughs) <laughs> not be sane. <laughs> so, you know, it was interesting to look at what people included in their scary song lists. I was surprised how many lists included Werewolves of London. Because I kind of like that song. And I guess I always thought it was a little bit funny. I don't think I really thought of it as scary. So I went and read the lyrics uh, today. And there is a line in there about little old lady got mutilated late last night. Yeah. So, okay. I concede the point that, yeah, it's not all fun and games. Um, but, but so much of that song seemed to be about, I don't know, like fashion or. Yeah. It was, it was more like being popular type thing. Oh, or the werewolves are preying on you. And it's like not real wolves. It's like people taking advantage. Mm-hmm. Or a certain culture maybe yeah 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 so but that was interesting to to see that 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 so many lists had that song which i'm like i like that song <laughs> <laughs> well a lot of these songs i like too it's like don't want to play them over and over again because <laughs> it's people will suspect (laughs) (laughs) your neighbors will report you. (laughs) Yeah. We better be nervous about this whole episode. Somebody's going to be like, yeah, those two weirdo podcasts. Yeah. Well, I got great ideas from them. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Oh dear. If we get too many hits, we'll have to, we'll have to take it off. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We're promoting violence and uh, yeah. Death and killing people because they, yeah, they're not nice to you. Yeah. Well, there's the whole era of music, which, which is like death metal or, or Mm -hmm. even heavy metal to some extent where it's a lot of scary thoughts that are meant to scare, I think our parents more than the kids. (laughs) And and I think, I I mean, how many devil and Satan type songs Mm -hmm. are the kids going to, be singing along to when all the parents are just shaking like oh no what's going on what's happening to to jimmy over there he's really going off the deep edge but it's just a process i think a lot of teens go through is with the music Mm -hmm. they don't really care what the content is it's just about what's popular and what what they like Mm -hmm. how they feel Mm -hmm. yeah like alice cooper and black sabbath and all those bands i mean they all have good songs but they all have a bit of a darkness to him at times too. Sure. Yeah. That edginess, but yeah, that's true. I had thought of that. There's a whole category of scary songs that are, yeah, these are intended to scare your parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can put a poster up in your room and really freak out your mom. when. when she... I know. It's like, ooh, we better yeah. call the, we better call minister Jack over right away and get over here. <laughs> Right, we, need, yeah. we need some exorcisms going on. Yeah, some <laughs> youth group intervention or something. Yeah, that's <laughs> funny. That that is definitely a whole a whole category. 
And that's sort of along the lines of things that are predicted to show up on a Halloween list, right? Sort of this joke, scary songs or sort of fake uh, scary songs. Uh, the one I always think of is Ghostbusters. I would think of Haunted, Haunted House and Monster Mash. And Haunted House has, has a great saxophone stuff in it. And it's just a really, really swinging song. Uh-huh. And about the Haunted House with the ghost party. And to me, that's one of the one of the classics. But you don't hear it as much because it's, I think, longer and more involved. Someone just can't sing along to it very well because you need to have more instrumentation. But another thing that's a soundtrack type thing that I don't know how popular it was, but the movie just came out and that's Haunted House by Disney. I know I've seen a, an album by Disney that's the Haunted House music from the actual theme park. Uh-huh. That's a whole another category of people trying to make a, a scary thing that's not that scary, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's like just playing scary music in a scene where nothing bad is going to happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, th- this idea of what is yeah formulaic. This is supposed to be scary, even though it isn't really. And then, of course, you know, it depends a lot on the age of the audience. Yeah. Right? I mean, things can be really quite scary for little kids that, you know, teenagers just brush off and, and even adults, you know, they've sort of seen that, done that. It's not scary. But little kids, you know, they haven't. And depending on what stories they've been told, you know, think they can really be terrified by things that show up on TV or scary stories or not, not understanding yeah. a story. So yeah, I mean, scariness is, isn't all fun and games, right? I mean, people can genuinely be terrified by something. Yeah, it can be traumatic for a lot of, mm-hmm. a lot of, a lot of people. And even hearing a song about something that you've kind of forgotten about and it kind of brings something back. Mm-hmm. It's scary and terrifying in itself, and you don't always realize what's going to trigger things because a lot of people have a lot of underlying issues that they've pushed down so far that it just takes that certain song, and sometimes a scary song is brings back the fear. And the power of music, the combination of yeah. notes together or a particular instrument coming in in a certain way, you know, it's really visceral, the reactions that we get from music it it taps into things that are you know probably in our subconscious and old memories old traumas so yeah (laughs) and we're we're getting kind of down there but let's um let's end on some happy songs okay there's a song i think it's kind of humorous and kind of peppy and weirdly enough it's the monty python song always look on the bright side of life Uh uh-huh which has a good message and it's um Really a happy tune. Mm-hmm. Up being out of these dark songs, now I'm trying to think of some happy ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this it's this idea of humor and fear or scary things. Uh, it's sometimes kind of going together. And, it, you know, it is interesting. A lot of people will go to scary movies for that adrenaline rush, right? I mean, yeah. lots, of, lots of people are into horror and horror uh, shows. Uh, it's exciting. And that's always interesting to me to to listen to people who enjoy that kind of visceral reaction. And a lot of it is from the music or from jump scares or, you know, it's not as though they're immune to that. It's that it's a, it's thrilling. And so, you know, there is something kind of joyful about that, right? I'm still alive. I've still, you know, <laughs> jumped out of my skin at this. Well, that one got me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That one got me. Ha ha. Yeah. And it's funny, right? It, it's funny that you get scared or funny that you're with someone who got scared. Yeah, it's just, we're, we're such weird species. We're just yeah. so strange. <laughs> we're, all, we're all individuals. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for coming on to talk about scary stuff, scary stuff we like or don't like. And happy Halloween. Happy Halloween to you, too. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We really appreciate it. Don't forget to check out the show notes for additional information about this episode. And give us a like or a thumbs up on Podomatic or wherever you listen to your podcasts. We'd also love to have your support on Patreon. And get in touch. We'd love to hear from you through the internet or Twitter or whatever means works for you. And finally, thanks to Caffeine Creek for the theme music.